In this video, I want to share a simple yet powerful tool for protecting you and your classmates in the lab. The tool is called RAMP. RAMP stands for R, recognize hazards, A, assess risks, M, minimize risks, and P, prepare for emergencies. The key to using this tool is to understand that hazard and risk are not the same thing. A hazard is defined as any source of potential injury, damage, or harm. Risk, on the other hand, describes the likelihood you will be harmed by the hazard. Confused? Okay, let's consider a real life example. Lightning is a known hazard, but on a clear day, there is no risk of being struck by lightning. There are also a number of simple things you can do to minimize the risk of being exposed to lightning during a thunderstorm. For example, you can stay inside, or if you're stuck outside, you can avoid tall objects such as trees or flagpoles. You can use the same type of thinking to protect yourself in the lab. Almost every experiment you do will have some potential hazards, but by following basic safety precautions, you can reduce the risk of injury from these hazards. Let's go through the steps in the RAMP protocol one by one to see how this is done. The first step in carrying out a RAMP analysis is to identify and recognize all of the potential hazards. First, read labels on bottles and containers to identify chemical hazards. Hazards can be identified at a glance through the use of graphic symbols called pictograms. For more information about the chemicals you'll be using and their hazards, your teacher may ask you to review safety data sheets. Next, read the procedure to identify physical hazards that could arise from using equipment. For example, Bunsen burners and hot plates can cause burns or fires. Or, electrical equipment could short circuit, giving you a shock or starting a fire. Finally, identify any extreme hot or cold temperatures as well as high or low pressure. Handling extremely cold materials can cause frostbite while high pressure can cause things to explode. For each potential hazard you've identified, it's important to analyze the degree of risk, the level of danger. Fortunately, there's an easy way to visualize risk, known as the four quadrant approach. On the x-axis, we can map the likelihood of exposure to the hazard, and on the y-axis, severity of the danger. The highest risk activities are those in the upper right quadrant, they have severe consequences and are very likely to happen. The lower left quadrant represents the lowest risk. Obviously, you and your teacher should pay special attention to activities that carry the highest level of risk and danger, but don't completely ignore smaller risks just because you think they're unlikely to happen or the consequences won't be that severe. Let's apply this thinking to a commonly used lab chemical, hydrochloric acid. Our experiment calls for us to pour the acid from a dispensing bottle into a glass beaker. Now, hydrochloric acid is extremely corrosive. It will burn skin and eyes if it comes in contact. On our risk matrix, that's a high hazard. In addition, hydrochloric acid is a liquid, so there's a good chance of spilling it. Also, hydrochloric acid produces fumes, which can irritate airways. If we do nothing to protect ourselves, our risk of exposure is relatively high. Taking into account both the danger of the hazard and the likelihood of exposure, we can now see that this part of our experiment carries a high risk of injury, and we must take many precautions when working with this chemical. Hazards are intrinsic properties of chemicals, equipment, or procedures. That means we can't change them directly. We can, however, reduce or minimize the risk of harm caused by hazards. Here are three main strategies. One, eliminate the hazard by replacing a particular chemical with a less hazardous one. For example, in the case of hydrochloric acid, your teacher would make sure that you are using the lowest possible concentration of acid to make the experiment work. Two, follow all appropriate safety precautions, which might include working in a fume hood. And three, wear personal protective equipment, such as goggles, aprons, and gloves to prevent eye and skin contact in case of accidental spills. Here are a few other practical tips to help you minimize risks and prevent accidents in the lab. Carefully study the written procedure along with relevant safety instructions before coming to lab. Ask questions if you don't understand something or feel you need more information. Work with volatile chemicals in the fume hood. This is a special ventilation enclosure that removes chemical vapors and thus prevents exposure to chemicals that may be harmful if you breathe them. Wear chemical splash goggles whenever working with chemicals, heat, or glassware. Check glassware for broken edges and cracks before beginning each activity and inspect electrical equipment before use. Finally, 
Be sure to discard leftover chemicals in any products or byproducts from the experiment as directed by your teacher. Despite the best preparation and planning, sometimes accidents do happen. So it's important to be prepared for emergencies. Know the locations of all laboratory safety equipment, including eyewash, fire extinguisher, safety shower, and first aid kit. Review classroom procedures for handling common emergencies such as spills, cuts, burns, exposures, and fires. Be prepared to report any chemical spills or contact with chemicals to your teacher. No matter how minor or small they may seem at the time, always inform your teacher of any unplanned incidents. This includes spills. Immediately report any chemical spills or contact with chemicals. Remember, to enjoy the lab and stay safe, it's always a good idea to get ramped up for safety.